Let's talk about UFOs and UAPs now. I'm still sticking by calling them UFOs, by the way. And we could be hitting some interesting deadlines where we may get some interesting information from the House of Representatives, the United States government, on UFOs. Uh, our next guest is uh, Michael Horn. He's a lead UFO investigator. He's the U.S. media representative, Bill, Billy Meyer Contacts. And you were just contacted, Michael, by a U.S. House Intelligence Committee to help them to turn over evidence of photos that you have of UFOs specifically. I want you to tell our audience, uh, first of all, what these photos show. We'll put them up here on the screen. And why do you think that they wanted to see these photos, the government? Thanks, Clayton. Um, these photos are historically unprecedented. The Prior to our finding and revealing them, they had never before been seen. And what they show is an interaction in nine photos. I originally thought there were only five and four duplicates, but they're nine photos of a then top secret stealth interacting with one of the UFOs connected to the Billy Meyer case. I, and, uh, and the person that, yeah. and it's very important because these photos are amazing. And they took place before digital cameras. This was, in, I think, in the early 1980s, if I'm not mistaken, correct? On the date? 1981. 1981. Exactly. And they were taken by... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. So these were... The, I'm just excited about this. It's a fascinating story. And the, how, the fact that the House Intelligence Committee reaches out to you for these, um, these photos. Did they ask for negatives, copy of negatives? No, they didn't. What happened, in all fairness, I, you know, I call different... Uh, let's say, departments, uh, individuals. I reach out through emails and texts and what have you. And I had left a message for uh, Representative Andre uh, Carson, who was heading up this subcommittee. And I simply left a message saying, I have these photos. And I did not expect to hear back from them because they don't right. get back to me. <laughs> I wonder why. So I was very surprised when I received a phone call from a a woman, I didn't recognize her voice. It said area code 202. I was going to hang up. I thought it was spam. And she said something about And I took my finger away from deleting the call. And she said, we got your photos and the committee would like to see them. Would you be willing to send them over? Well, of course, I sent the you know digital version of the photos. And I have a correspondence uh, with her back and forth, a few emails, not a lot, about her having received them, thanking me for them. She'll make sure the committee sees them. And then I sent her something else that she found very interesting, which was the prophetic information in this case from Billy Meyer. Uh, connected to the U.S. Uh, now World War III that we're promoting and provoking. And she said, well, I'll make sure this gets its way up the chain. I never heard back from that committee. I didn't write any more than that. And as we know, those photos were never seen. They've never been announced by this committee or any other government committee. They've been censored because they put to a lie this whole threat scenario. Right. And so this is a very important part of this, right? We've been hearing from certain senators, Marco Rubio and others that are the reason we're starting to hear in my opinion, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. The reason we're starting to hear more and more about this is they're trying to position this UFO threat to say that, okay, so now after thousands of years of sightings, uh, that suddenly now they are a threat to us. And therefore, the re and you always want to follow the money, right? Why? So now we want to build up Space Force. We want to build bases on the moon. We want to, these guys are now a, suddenly a threat to us. And here we have photographic proof from early 1980s showing these UFOs just interacting with a stealth fighter pilot and nothing happened. And th that has been repeated countless times by fighter pilots where there's been no, no, no threat, no attacks, nothing like that for for decades when we, these fighter pilots have interacted with these craft am i wrong or, or am i am i overstating this i think you're basically right there's been no photographic evidence or film or video compass and these photos actually were taken by the lead military investigator in the Meyer case, Lieutenant Colonel Wendell Stevens. He'd been retired from the Air Force. He had been dis uh, tasked with researching UFOs for the Air Force since 1947. He continued. He was told about this. 
uh, there was communication. The extraterrestrials involved in this assisted him at Groom Lake, this Area 51 Groom Lake thing. He would have been shot on the spot had they seen him. He should take the photos and somehow they're safely. We will leave that to people to figure out how that was done. So what we have here is a deliberate misleading, to put it mildly, this is done for weapons and war. And you know, when this whole thing first came out with Lou Elizondo and this threat premise, which I attacked right away, they then gave a committee six months to decide if this was a threat. This is not how the world works, folks. No highly technologically developed adversary is going to wait six months for you to discover it, let alone 70 years, so that our world, our civilization could develop weaponry to try to combat a threat. And by the way, you mentioned UAP, and I'll just say this. This is another diversion. You change the name to phenomena. And of course, we have a world of phenomena seekers who just want to be sensationalized. And so all the people that follow that and walk down that road have helped to bury the truth of what this is about. Yeah, we have the sound. This was this was uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, well, we're not going to play here, but she, Hillary Clinton specifically saying, no, no, it's now we're calling them UAPs. Now we're calling them UAPs. She said that on a, I forget what show it was, Jimmy Kimmel or some show. And, uh, Oh, now we're calling it? You're telling us that we're now calling them UAPs. Like, sorry, sister. I'm still continuing to call them UFOs. Um, a few more questions on this. So this House committee, we've got multiple committees involved in this. We were coming up against some awesome. deadlines for them to release these reports. It sounds like from the preliminary uh, reports that we're seeing um, from the Daily Caller and others that there's really just a bunch of garbage in in these reports. Nothing, nothing that we're really going to get excited about. And as you and I were talking offline, you say, we deserve this. <laughs> Why do we deserve a trash report? Because this has been turned into a trendy disinformation campaign. It, it has long been disinformation from the, the government. They've known since the 20s of the development terrestrially uh, of of uh, alternative craft, and they've also known for a long time, 70 years at least, of the presence of other crafts. But they know that there's no threat, which is why they can try to get the public stirred up. If there was a threat, we'd never know about it. So here's you know, the bottom line on it, if you will. This has been turned into, to answer your question, this trendy thing. If you go on Twitter, there's a UAP uh, you know, site, uh, Twitter UFO, Twitter UAP, because the people that follow this the in the most dedicated way are wannabes and people who have no research experience and they they become the willing followers and psych fans who perpetuate the dead end thing and now those people as i've been telling you for two years are all angry at the insubstantial inconclusive and irrelevant reports and information being leaked and all you yeah. deserve this folks you Truth. Here's the case. Look at these photos. Look at the composite from Jaime Mossan in Mexico of just from five of the photos of what was going on here. If you look at the beamship gallery photos, you're going to see the most phenomenal evidence that's been kept from you and that skeptics attack because it's too good to be true. How do you win that one? We get what we deserve. Well, I would love to hear if the uh, House of Representatives Intelligence Subcommittee gets back to you on these photos and any other materials that you have. Uh, I, I'll be waiting with bated breath on that. We'll be awaiting this report. We'll be you know, dissecting it. Um, and we, uh, as always, continue. Uh, Michael and I have done a much deeper interview that I would encourage all of you to watch in our Redacted Conversations. It's our playlist here on our channel. You can check that out. A much deeper conversation about all of this. Michael, uh, as always, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. It. Thank you, Clayton. Much appreciated on my part. I love all the comments in the chat. <laughs> so like, well, he's absolutely right. And others saying, oh, tinfoil hats. Others saying this is absolutely crazy. I love the back and forth on it. Seriously, I do. Because first of all, let's just unpack a few of these little things here for a second. Um, it was, it's part of a government plan, of course, to make sure that we talk about these things as conspiracy theories, right? This has mm -hmm. been a part of their plan for many, many years so that 
after the United States came out with, and you have you have Harry Truman in the White House actually talking about UFOs in Washington, D.C., and a number of presidents actually talking and confirming it publicly. Um, then you had this concerted effort from the intelligence state to switch it around and to use it as convenient cover arguably to cover up secret projects. So now anyone who sees these things is crazy. You're absolutely out of your rocker. Everything's fake. You're you're foolish. And anyone who then would talk about it publicly would be, of course, I heard this from members of the United States military, U.S. Air Force pilots. And when I interviewed different members of the military, they told me, yes, we know that they exist. We're just not allowed to talk about it. If you talk about it, you get ridiculed. Yes. It's part of their plan. I mean, this is from high level members of the military that I've spoken to. So you talk about it, you get ridiculed. Heck, I spoke to the pilot for Air Force One who would fly the president of the United States who witnessed UFOs. He said, we can't talk about it. If you talk about it, you lose your job. Mm -hmm. That's what happens to pilots who fly major aircraft. Yeah. That time has now changed. I think over the last 10 years, now that the bombshell New York Times story revealed and came out, we're starting to see more uh, more discussion about it. But again, the, the concern is, of course, these, these uh, reports... Uh, like the, uh, I'll put this up here on the screen. I don't know if we have my laptop or not, but maybe we don't. Here we do. Bombshell UFO report to be a cover up as officials fear public is too stupid for the truth. Well, clearly. So this, we'll see. I mean, if this new report comes out in the next day or two, will this bombshell report be cover up because officials fear that you guys who are watching are just too stupid for the truth and that you don't want, you know, I don't know that that's what. Or that we're just too stressed out. I mean, that's what they're out. saying with all the censorship stuff around everything. We're just, we're too stupid to get truth. We're too stupid to get all the information. We have to have them mm -hmm. make all the decisions on what we can see for us. Otherwise, it's just going to be chaos. People are going to walk and be walking around with different opinions. Right. How <laughs> dare you have different opinions? I, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so we want to bring the story to you because the House of Representatives Intelligence Committee reached out, is reaching out actively two different UFO researchers for materials on specific UFOs uh, and specific stuff from the early 1980s, uh, pre-digital photographs and stuff. So fascinating. I'm fascinated by it. So we wanted to bring you the story. Hope you have an open mind. Have an open mind.